effed under, you know, the windscreen wiper, do you? Not unless you park in my driveway. Then you will get a note under your windscreen wiper. Yeah, and that'll be official uh, police one saying... <laughs> More or less, yeah. You're f***ing nicked for parking you're in nicked, this driveway. No, excuse me, is that your vehicle? <laughs> Sorry, I just want to get into that whole Australian thing. woman has found a creepy note after returning from her uh, jog on Nudgy Beach. Nudgy Beach. Nudgy Beach in Brisbane. The message, which was shoved under the windscreen wiper, said, Hello, I think you're very attractive. If you're interested, I would like to pay your cash for your panties. That's really badly written. It I is. Just, spelling, like, spelling is correct. Grammar's f***ed, though. Your. It's not the right your. Well, it goes on to say, I'll meet you on the side of the road back to town. Just pull over. I'll find you. Oh, that ain't creepy at all, is it? The Australian woman said she was disturbed at the thought of someone had been watching her and warned others to be aware of their surroundings. She said, I was only gone for about 20, 30 minutes. As soon as I got back, I noticed a piece of paper sticking out from underneath the windscreen wiper. Now, look at this. He doesn't write in cursive. There is some cursive, but not cursive. It's actually quite readable, yet it's written in that small, spidery, serial killer kind of handwriting, would you say? Yeah, it's a little bit weird. Like, who uses three exclamation marks? And it, it, then the back of it's even creepier. It just says, just pull over, I'll find you. Now, <laughs> she thought it was a ticket, or maybe someone had knocked her car and left a note, which never bloody no, happens. No, never happens. But then she read it and she was grossed out. Now, she went home and started reading it over and over again and it just sunk in. How do you need to read that over and over to discover how creepy that is? Like, (laughs) hi, don't know you. I want to buy your underwear. After you've had a jog. After you've gone for a jog. Because... Just jog on. (laughs) So she's talked to Queensland police, uh, having up in Queensland, as this person could be a predator. You think? Do you honestly think? She just wanted to get the warning out there for people to always be aware of what's happening around them. So I agree. Carry a f- taser, ladies, as well, and this kind of shit going down. So you know how, like, other companies, third-party companies have developed those uh, wearable things you can strap your phone to your arm oh, yeah. while you're listening to, you're jogging on listening you to- power ballads. Or, or your ballads on there while you're your jogging. Mamma Mia podcast. Yeah, yeah you know, whatever. Or, all that kind of thing, and um, so the, the the thing is, they're distracted by the head. This is a big problem in big cities like Melbourne and Sydney and shit. Right, big problem because people are too engrossed by their phone. She's got it on. She's obviously too engrossed by Tori Amos or maybe a little bit of Billy. Uh, what's a Billy English or whatever her name? Illish or whatever Billie her name Eilish. is. Well, what, Katie Lang. Katie Lang. <laughs> wow. <laughs> She's listening to KD Lang. They're the wrong underpants that you're buying, son. <laughs> Hit us up on the socials at thebirdle.com.au. Speed round done and dusted. Ah. Figging as. Right. Figging. <laughs> I've been waiting for this since we had the production meeting. This will be good. Figging. So you probably hear me say, well, people have sex with figs. No. But you wouldn't be in any way presumptuous in thinking that given the name as. However... <laughs> It's another botanical substance, the humble, herbaceous, perennial ginger root that people are inserting up their back passages and into vaginas. What now? Um, which casts the Aussie sexual slang term root in an entire, <laughs> entirely different context altogether. All right, so we're talking uh, figging. Now, listen. Why? Why are we talking figging? Well, the Romans thought it was a magnificent idea to burn someone's back passage for a wrongdoing, as did the kinky Victorians, who have said to use it to quell their spirited wives. Now, the term (laughs) figging (laughs) derives from the word figging, a practice once employed by breeders, equestrians and farmers who insert a piece of ginger into the anus of a horse. We have hit rock (laughs) one. Into the anus of a horse to make it appear younger and sprightlier. So their tail would sit up (laughs) higher in the air when (laughs) they were either for sale or performing at horse shows. But thankfully, this cruel, non-consensual practice (laughs) has now been banned. (laughs) Oh, f*** me. Now... (laughs) Not with ginger, no. With a piece of ginger. Now, there have been some people in the BDSM community who were fans of the burble, that have embraced the idea by carving butt plugs out of ginger roots. That's rock bottom right there. (laughs) 
Okay. <laughs> but why? But why? So I'm getting to that. So, but why is this actually happening? Well, that's a perfectly valid question, and I'm going to try and answer that for you. All right, please do. Now, look, I don't have any desire to fill out any of what I'm talking about here whatsoever, but it goes like this. After a gentle insertion of the ginger butt plug... <laughs> I just, I'm just thinking of the people right now that I know personally that listen to this podcast who are just going to have a knowing smile. Because <laughs> like, they've been figging. No, because they've heard what I've said. <laughs> Apparently the sensation starts out as a warm, mild tingling. Now, if you want to get an idea of what it'll feel like... Stick then, some ginger up your ass. No, just nibble on a piece of raw ginger and see how intense that is. But as... That's just the beginning. <laughs> I'm sure it is. I need Please have, tell me sorry, more. Sorry, I need please. to have a sip here. Tell me more. It's like a train crash. We're in too far now. We can't turn away. Okay, so the rear passage turns into a self-regulating oven, <laughs> which heats up the ginger butt plug. And with, <laughs> and with that, the muscles contract and the spicy oils of the ginger are released. <laughs> which <laughs> inflame... The delicate rectal tissue. Now, <laughs> what happens next is ultimately down how do your body reacts with oils. Aww. Now, as it could be a just a delightful little tingle, or <laughs> clench your buttholes for this one, ladies. <laughs> it could be so f***ing excruciating, it'll drive you to tears. Now, according to some internet research that they've done, some doms up the ante by adding spanking or caning into the equation. Then the submissive has to clench their butt cheeks, which is said to make the burning even worse. Others focus on the secondary pain inflicted on your skin to take away the focus from the fact that your asshole has a piece of ginger in it. <laughs> the whole experience is said to last about 20 minutes to half an hour. That's a unique art installation. Now, I reckon if we got on Etsy, we'd find ginger butt plugs though, right? On Etsy? Etsy. I don't spend much time on Etsy. Hang on a second. Okay, <laughs> that's a risky click. That one. Let's not go there. Now we, we need to we need to be sensitive to people here because they could be offended by what we said. But also, moreover, we, life threatening because. Well, do you reckon they're spicy about it all? Well, people can be sensitive or even allergic to ginger. But the real danger would be if you haven't created a wide enough of a handle on the ginger to grasp hold of it and retrieve it. <laughs> then you're in the emergency room. I don't know if it stacks up to having your. Stuck in gears of a bike, but or putting a USB charge cable in the eye. You d- what are you going to say? Look, seriously, doctor, I was making a stir fry in the shower. I was nude and slipped and fell on a root of ginger, and it's decided to climb, <laughs> climb Everest. Oh, look, it's also carved itself into the shape of a butt plug. How about that? This is the Burble with Benny and As. Your Lord and Saviour, Elon Musk. Ah, Lord Elon. Genius, evil genius that he is, thinks differently from the rest of us, doesn't he? Oh, yes, he does. His brain is wired like three inches to the left. It's really odd. Well, as he posted a really strange meme showing Her Majesty the Queen, Queen Elizabeth II, wearing various coats in the same colours made famous by Dipsy, La La, Poe and Tinky Winky, otherwise known as... The Teletubbies! The Teletubbies. You know that they're back? There's an animated Teletubbies series now. Oh, that couldn't be more creepy, could it? No, it couldn't. Now, look, Remember those the names... the son in the Teletubbies? Uh, it was like that child... Like that... Can I be honest? I never watched it, you... <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Did you honestly tell? No, I, actually, I remember when they came out, and Have I know. You ever seen like the memes or seen memes? No, 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 no. no, no, no. I'm going to spell this out for you, burble listeners. Okay, oh. I remember that at the time the Teletubbies came out, as may have had some influence from some type of substances, and then got a girlfriend. Then had a really awesome girlfriend who decided to also indulge in some of that stuff. I can just picture you, Ginger, huh, Ginger. No, not Ginger. (laughs) Just spaced out at the end of the day, sitting on the lounge, and here comes the Teletubbies. And you're just engrossed in it, and you go, I couldn't be f***ed, I'm not moving. Yeah, pretty much. Remotes over there. Mm. Now, did we have remotes back then? Yeah, we had remotes back then. (laughs) Can't remember, funnily enough. You turn to to your uh, your partner at the time, and you're just like, eh, we're watching this. And you're like, she's like, "Mm." and you're watching Telly. I guarantee you. All right. Anyway, for those who have children or had a past, um, the Teletubbies baby was probably the scariest thing about the whole f- 
show. Was it in the handbag? No, it was like it, the sun rose, but it was like a child, like so, like this like one year old kid that they'd put face paint all over and then put like a, a halo of a, a sun around the outside, and it came up and went <laughs> and just laughed. Who gave birth to the baby? I don't know. That's as weird as like you know that Yo Gabba Gabba show. Mm. I bet your mum well, in the night garden. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's like f-ing weird. That's child mining by no but yo gabba gabba there's like a penis shaped character with all these nubbies on it and i bet your mums just go i can't wait till the toy comes out of that (laughs) elon musk now listen those names i just mentioned dipsy la la po and tinky winky may sound something like harry and megan might come up with when they're trying to find their next pet but well no that'd be more like randy or something wouldn't it because megan's american yeah look if you're young or simply uninterested in what we're having to say Teletubbies were big in the 90s, believe it or not. They wore brightly coloured characters who bumbled around hugging each other and all that kind of thing. And there was a controversy about the one in the purple being gay. Now, how? He's got like an upside down bloody coat hanger on his head. Yeah, they reckoned that that was like some um, subliminal message about like how then they made the Jews wear triangles on their shirts. It was a whole controversy back before we really had the internet. That's it was, drawing a long straw. It is a long straw, but, you know, kale as well. So, so. anyway, Elon Musk has uh, shared a meme showing the queen in Teletubby land along with the word queen and a little bee emoji. <laughs> Now, in terms of her different <laughs> colours... It's not bad, really. Yeah. I, look, a couple of years back, Elon Musk is just this average bumbling billionaire mm. tech tycoon working on electric cars, space exploration and, and ginger. But he's reached a whole new generation <laughs> after becoming a social media superstar. Then he's transformed into an unlikely new role as an internet meme lord. He really has. Why is he doing that? Like, well, he's got to make science fun again, hasn't he? So, look, I remember... Uh, like, no one wants to hear about the third stage rocket booster and the liquid oxygen and oxidizer mix in a f***ing spaceship. No, they want to So hear he's got to release these t- Teletubbies memes. Yeah, they want to see what Elon Musk's going to do next. Like, you know, after he was hitting the, the ganja with, um, <laughs> what's his name? <laughs> That's a great bloody meme. I want to get a T-shirt of you know the, the the picture of Elon where he's just drawing back and all the smoke looking like Snoop Dogg. Well, the question as is is that a lot of people are saying is Elon's side hustle just a way of escaping the loneliness of life at the top of the economic food chain? No, I think he's just taking the piss. <laughs> to be honest, so are you saying that he's <laughs> he's like no, I'm no, rich? No, 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 wait, wait. He's worked his whole life on all these wonderful things, has opinions on stuff, can do this, can do that, all the kind of thing. You know, his brother's actually famous too. His brother's into some health food thing or something like yeah. that. Hasn't made nearly the amount of money that old Elon has. So he's the black sheep of the family. Probably. still He's only a millionaire. Maybe just is is Elon lonely? Is no. he just tweet stuff out because he wants someone to say, hey, Elon, you're doing a smack dab job. Or... You know, I love you, Elon. You know, plenty of people are going to try and s- for his money, okay? <laughs> True. There's always, there's always the hangers-on, the yes-men, all of that shit. All that kind but of But look, thing. My, my opinion is that he's just taking the piss. Like, why not? Now, would you uh, would you buy a share in Elon's company? Have you Absolutely. Got a, well, you've got a spare $420 to share. <laughs> actually, just think about that for a second. He's, his shares are $420. $420. <laughs> What's Maybe. that mean? What's four twenty? Can oh, I tell the tell the the four twenty the the uninitiated that's, that's the, weed? That's, a, that's the weed time. Is it weed time? So four twenty is everywhere. Weed time. In, <laughs> Well, here we go. What is it? It's it's meant to be that anywhere in the world at 4.20 p.m. there's meant to be at least one other stoner spliffing up a bifter <laughs> with you. So at 4.20 you light one up. You know what I mean? Um, but anyway. Have you seen this other meme that he's sent out? He's basically put his face onto the rock. <laughs> he goes, yeah, I lift a little. And then, oh. and then there's another one that says being a billionaire. You know, he's just normal photo. Another photo of him slightly smiling, being a billionaire who creates flamethrowers and plans for Mars colonization. Then another one where he looks like he's got lasers coming out of his eyes that says, being a billionaire who builds flamethrowers and plans for Mars, and I can't read the rest of it. Well, that's f- Yeah, God. he makes flamethrowers. Like, this guy, is, he is. He's taking a piss. He's like, he's the nerd that everyone probably hated in school and beat up and bullied. And now he's, he's at the top of the food chain and he's just like, look at me. I can drop 
a meme about the Queen of England being a Teletubby and f*** everyone else. Musk is now 